liturgy, liturgical, Anglicanism. What's the first thing that comes to mind when you hear those words? My brain goes directly to Monty Python. It's crazy how my inexperience with an entire denomination of Christians has led me to have an image of the liturgical church that is more in line with movie fiction than actuality. Nothing wrong with liturgical churches at all, but if you're like me and don't know much about it, I'm here to shatter some beliefs about liturgy and technology. So, in this episode of Worship Tech Tour, I learned a lot, and I think you will too. It turns out it is very possible to have modern tech complement ancient practices. I guess you could say our friends at Wellspring Church know how to put the lit in liturgical. <laughs> I can't keep this in, can I? Before we get into the episode, I want to invite you guys to check out Worship Tech School. If you have any curiosity about implementing the latest tech in your worship ministry, or you want to get more technical training when it comes to things like mixing or lighting, then you should check out worshiptechschool.com, where you're going to find online training to help you implement the best tools for audio, video, lighting, and more at your church. So do it. Click the link in the description to learn more. For this episode of Worship Tech Tour, Jake and I sat down with Jeff Gale, who is the Communications and Tech Director at Wellspring Church here in Inglewood, Colorado. Wellspring is a charismatic liturgical church. They still play the same contemporary songs that many worship bands today play, and they implement a lot of new technology and have interesting tech solutions. The nature of their services involve breaks for liturgy between songs, and in the Anglican tradition, services tend to build toward communion rather than the sermon. So this creates unique tech challenges, as their service is somewhat choppy, meaning lots of muting and unmuting, and because of all the responsive readings, it is crucial that the screens remain functional especially for new guests who might not know the readings by heart. But with all of that being said, Wellspring Church has a very unique approach in their traditional service structure and considerations for how worship has been done for hundreds of years, yet they still have a lot of new and exciting technology. So let's dive into this tech setup with audio, lighting, video, and live streaming, starting with the sound design of their room. So we have a really interesting room that we meet in every week. As you can see, it's long. It's skinny. Um, we have wood floors throughout the whole room. And so that does present with some unique uh, acoustic challenges that we really try to overcome um, every week. We uh, also don't put our drums in a drum cage. Um, we have them open. And so the sound that we are going for in this room is less of a um, reinforced sound and more of a natural sound. Uh, we do have the standard setup. Um, we've got a small line array up behind me. Um, we've got a couple of great subwoofers. Um, so we really do, we really do jam. Um, but you're hearing a lot of the, uh, the, the frequencies that aren't, you know, kick, snare, and bass. You're hearing a lot of that stuff kind of acoustic coming from the instruments on the stage. Um, so it's a different philosophy, um, but we really try to make it work for the room that we're in. So as we've built uh, all of our technology here at Wellspring, our first and foremost consideration is simplicity. We really feel like uh, our volunteers being able to run the technology is kind of priority number one. So you'll see that everything that we have, um, while technologically advanced is also um, very accessible and that's by design. I'm not the one back here in the booth every weekend. We have a, a robust team of volunteers uh, that are trained that help us out, um, but they're, they're still volunteers. And so because of that, um, the technical knowledge is never where it's gonna be to run maybe a more uh, advanced system. So we just upgraded uh, our wireless rig and we are super happy with uh, what we're running. Everything is sure uh, and the uh, kind of crown jewel of the system is the Shure ULXD 4Q. So it's the Shure ULXD system but it's four receivers built into one uh, rack unit and so it really cleans up the system. Um, they all work together uh, to do frequency scanning and make sure your signals are good. If there's a problem with a certain frequency, they can switch the unit and the pack at the same time on the fly to a different frequency um, to make sure that your audio is coming through nice and clear. 
The mixer that they use is the Behringer X32 Compact, which is connected to the stage with an Ethercon cable and connects to two Behringer digital stage boxes. The entire band monitors themselves with the Behringer P16 personal monitor mixers. Most of their tech ecosystem is actually Behringer, but Jeff is looking to upgrade to the Midas M32 soon for the slightly better interface and preamps. But the X32 has worked for them for over five years and everything still functions as if it was new, so it is a great board for them. The speakers that they use are a part of the original installation five years ago, so they utilize a mono line array system and are hoping to upgrade to stereo soon. I would tell you the name of them, but we all forgot our binoculars and couldn't figure it out. That's fine. <laughs> just, say, just say a line array or whatever. Anyways, let's hear a little bit about the microphone system that they implement. Uh, so right now we're running three wireless over-ear microphones every Sunday and then uh, one wireless handheld. They are all on the Shure lithium-ion batteries, which we love, so uh, we have cradles for the microphones. They, uh, the people that are using them just set them in the cradle when they're done with them every week. They charge in that cradle and then when we pull them out the next week, they're charged up and ready to go, so we never replace batteries or anything like that. For our headset microphones, we use uh, the Countryman E6 microphones, which are pretty much the standard uh, over-ear microphone in the industry. We have problems here and there with placement um, based on who is using them. Some people think that the microphone is supposed to, you know, kind of point backwards, and as we know, that's not true. So uh, we have to help uh, people get their mics on every week. We also tape them uh, on with, with some medical grade face tape, um, but we, we make them work. I'm looking to upgrade to some better kind of both ear headset mics that'll make that problem a little bit uh, less, but for now, uh, we, we do like the Countryman brand, the microphone, they work really well. The wireless setup they have is dope. They really did go pretty top of the line with the ULX D4Q and their wireless system, but again, it's all about ease. They never have to worry about changing batteries and each mic is just turn on and play. Because of the growing number of digital devices in the room from the congregation and other tech, they did have to install some antennas from Shure after having some pack to receiver communication issues. But they just plug directly into the ULXD and they have not had any issues with dropout or audio clarity since they installed them. And then for stage microphones, they use wired Beta 87Cs. Since they never have to tear down and the microphones consistently stay in the same place, they went with wired mics so they could have more quality without dishing out the extra money for super nice wireless mics because, well, they don't really need to move around. They also have a crowd mics that are Rode shotgun mics and some drum mics. The drum mics they use are the Audix F15 for overhead, the Sennheiser E604 for toms, and the Bayer Dynamic M201 for their snare. This part of their setup is very intriguing. They already have wood floor and a very open room setup, yet they made the super intentional decision to mic the drums and not use a drum shield. Weird, right? <laughs> But Jeff is the drummer on Sundays a lot of the times, and he really does hate feeling isolated in a shield. So firstly, the kit is a Yamaha Live Custom Kit. So especially in the kick drum, it is a lot smaller than most kicks. So it's just naturally not going to be as loud. Then they also have Sabian FRX crash cymbals, which have holes in them that act as sort of a notch for those high frequencies that sound bad to the human ear. And they also put these cymbals behind cymbal shields by smoking ace. The kind of the final piece to the drums not being in a drum cage um, is the drummer uh, has to be in control of what the drummer's doing and so um, myself and our other drummers really take a lot of pride in how we hit these drums we believe that we don't need to crush these drums to get the right sound out of them um, so I would say on a normal Sunday, um, I probably peak out at about 70% of what I'm able to get to. And I probably um, kind of stay in the, the 30 to 40% zone of hitting these drums as I'm playing them. Uh, and that makes all the difference in the, in the world for the mix 
and for not having to be behind a drum shield. This is our Nord Stage 2 digital piano. It has a full organ section, piano section, and a synth section. Um, we feel like it's the workhorse of digital pianos. We love it. The sound that comes out of the Nord is unlike really any piano patches that we can find out there. So uh, we invested in this piano probably four years ago. We have not had one regret. It's expensive and a lot of the stuff we have on the stage is expensive but what we've learned is when you buy nice things uh, you get nice things and they last for a long time and so uh, we'll probably be playing on this Nord Stage 2 another five years from now. The bassist uses a Tech 21 Sans amp. It's really hard to replace the sound of a real bass amp but the bass player stands five feet away from the subwoofer so the Sans amp works great to keep stage volume down and the sub keeps the bass punchy. Then the electric guitarist uses a mic Fender's Blues Junior amp. Jeff put a lot of time into researching for this amp and it's compact and has the tone they were trying to achieve. It's simple but sounds great and their electric guitar volunteers are humble and don't try to turn up the amp to overcome the mix like some guitarists have been known to do. So it is a great system for them. The entire band uses iPad music stands running the music stand app. So each iPad has the charts on music stand integrated through planning center. And the nice thing about music stand is their worship leader can make notes or annotations on the charts and those will appear on everyone's iPads. They charge all the iPads in a super spooky locker in their back room. So we have a super simple lighting system here at Wellspring. Um, we are a church that loves natural light and I know that's different. Uh, and so all our windows stay open for all of our services. Uh, it gives a great glow for the whole room, but we still need some lighting to get the job done. So um, we've got a pretty old PAR based light system that runs uh, over the top of the whole room here. And uh, it's just a couple of dimmer packs with lights plugged into them. Uh, it's, it's very, very simple. Um, behind me, you'll see that we've got some LED lights on the floor all the way around the stage. We move those LED lights around all the time. Um, they're wired into the same uh, DMX network and so everything kind of works together. Um, in terms of control of this system, um, we run our DMX into a DMX to Ethernet uh, converter so that then uh, all of our DMX runs over our wireless network and then we control the whole lighting rig through a software called Luminaire. Uh, and it's an iOS software, so it runs on an iPad. Uh, so our tech guys can be mobile all, the, all around the room. Um, we can program lights from any location, uh, and, and it's super easy to use. You set it up one time, it's just great little digital faders. Um, and then it keeps the lighting system off of our ProPresenter computer. Uh, we've, we had it like that in the beginning, and it was just too many things going on on one box. So now we've got a little iPad mini, it's the cheapest iPad you can buy, and it runs all of our lights for us every weekend. For display, Wellspring has two Elite Screen Sable frame series and two projectors, which are the Optima X600s. In picking these projectors, Jeff was looking for lumens versus cost. And for 1400 bucks, these projectors get 6,000 lumens, which is significantly good proportional to the price. For control, they run ProPresenter, which goes from an HDMI into an SDI converter under the tech booth, up to the front of house, into an HDMI converter, and then into the projector. The reason for this was electrical discharge. When the congregation would all stand up, the screens would flicker because static electricity was hitting their ethernet run. So they converted to an SDI system because the cable is much more shielded. A tiny piece of their system that is pretty cool is this $100 video switcher that they bought from Amazon, which lets them switch their video feed. Pretty obvious. But they don't use it for any sort of live functionality because it causes the whole system to go black and turn back on. It's more for other people using the space. If the women's ministry during the week wants to play a video on DVD, they don't need some tech person there to help. They just hit the button and go. So in terms of power distribution and power management here in the booth, uh, we run everything into firm and power conditioners. I like to make sure uh, that everything is properly grounded and properly conditioned. Uh, one of the cool things about the room is that we run a, a, a delay a Furman delayed system uh, for our startup and shutdown. So uh, we have a little key built into the desk right here. Uh, when you turn that key on, we've got three different delays that happen that turn on gear uh, in the right order and then turn everything off backwards in the right order. So this Furman M8S here in the booth is connected to another Furman M8S uh, in our rack 
backstage. And so what that means is um, delay one, delay two, and delay three all happen at the same time in the back as well as here in the booth. So it makes, uh, it makes us never get those big pops. Um, we never hit our speakers too hard with signal as we're uh, turning things off, turning things on. Uh, it just kind of sequences everything out. It's a really great system. Like this key to quickly and efficiently turn everything on and off, Jeff has set up the whole tech system to be very volunteer friendly with some odd solutions to certain tech problems. For the Pro Presenter operator, he got a Stream Deck by Elgato, which is mainly used by YouTubers and people who stream video games. But it's a hundred bucks and he programmed it so that each button has very specific sets of actions. So like the Spotify button will automatically open up the pre-service Spotify playlist and play it. And he also programmed many of Pro Presenter's actions to other buttons on it. It is a pretty unique solution and it's really as close as you can get to automation without actually automating. He also came up with this idea for Philips Hue Lights. Wellspring believes in families worshiping together, so before sermon, the kids all stay with the adults and head downstairs once the musical part of worship is done. And to get the kids back up, all a volunteer has to do is push a button and Hue Lights downstairs will turn green, letting the teachers and kids know it's time to come back. They did used to have a doorbell and it was super distracting because you could hear it through the floor when it went off. So Jeff came up with this good idea to use Hue Lights. Lastly, their live streaming setup, which we are about to get into, is super streamlined for volunteers. One single button press on this Aja Hello and the live streaming starts. One button press and it stops. It's that stupid simple. So the jump to live stream for us was kind of an emotional one. Um, being in a liturgical church and a sacramental body of believers, it's super important for us that folks are here in the room for our worship service. Um, we feel like we're a family and we don't wanna necessarily encourage people to not be here. So the camera they use at Wellspring for this streaming is a Canon XA30. And that's it. No fancy multicam or really any camera movement at all. They do have the ability to zoom in and out, but they really keep a consistent framing. And again, it's all very intentional. They almost want the live stream experience to be subpar, leaving you wanting more. They really don't heavily promote their live stream to the public. It's mainly for congregants who are out of town on vacation or business trips who still want to remain connected. In the Anglican tradition, they place a high value on people actually showing up to church for worship. Novel idea, huh? But for the live stream, the camera sends a feed to the Aja Hello, which then both records the video and audio and sends the feed to the live stream platform, again, all with just the push of one button. So for our streaming platform, we use a service called DaCast, D-A-C-A-S-T dot com. Um, they are a paid service, um, but I've found that they're one of the cheaper services in the industry and they're wonderful to work with. Um, so we, I think we pay them about 250 bucks a year and they host all of our streaming for that amount of money. Um, and so we can stream directly from this box straight to them. We have a page on our website that then gets a little player from them. And then they also give us what's called an M3U8 stream. And that stream hooks directly into our Wellspring app. So from the app is where most people participate in our live stream. Uh, and it's just a beautiful interface where they jump in, press play, and they're into our services right along with us from wherever they are in the world. The tech setup at Wellspring is pretty awesome. Jeff has done an amazing job at making the whole thing quite simplistic and volunteer friendly. It's also fascinating to me to see how a church with very traditional values is adapting new tech to still fit those values. If you want to learn more about implementing the latest tech in your ministry, I want to invite you to check out Worship Tech School, where we have courses on how to implement the latest audio, video, lighting, and more for your worship ministry. So click the link down in the description to learn more. But that covers it for this episode of Worship Tech Tours. Be sure to leave some comments below on what you think about this setup and if you also have any creative tech solutions to problems. Thanks again to Jeff for letting us crash his lit liturgical party. I will see you guys in the next episode. Oh,